Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how we made these cool wine barrel risers for our septic tanks. We figured why go with a traditional plastic riser when we can do something cool. We live out in the country, so why not get a country feel going and dress up a truly crappy area of our house. The first step was to remove what was left of the old lids from the tanks. I had to measure the hole size and it came in at about 29 inches across. Then measuring the wine barrel came at 29 and a quarter. So I headed over to the lumber store to see if I could find something that would work. I came across these fire bricks that worked out to 36 inches across, which would put the barrel dead center of the bricks. So I picked up 14 of these and I headed back home. So I settled on a PL Premium adhesive to glue these blocks together, making sure to put enough glue on each end to secure the blocks together, and then just repeating the process until the circle is complete. So I'm going to use a tie down strap to keep these bricks together while the glue dries and with the heat wave we're in right now it shouldn't take long at all. And now I'll just repeat the same process for the other circle and that'll be the two bases done. Now if you haven't seen the barrel cutting jig that we made with a table saw, I'll put a link right at the top here. Make sure you check that out. It's a great way to cut barrels in half for planters or anything like that. So I'm using a three quarter inch tech screw to screw the barrel rings to the barrel just so that all the wood stays tight and secure. Now as much as I love these little Bosch drills, they're not good for continuous use. So I had to break out a DeWalt to finish the rings around the barrels. So it was at this point that I realized I forgot to take the lid out of the barrel. So I tried cutting with a jigsaw around the barrel. That just bent my blade on the jigsaw. So I figured I'd just drill a hole, run the saw straight across, and then beat it out with a hammer. And that seemed to work okay. I decided to secure the bottom ring as well just to make certain that the wood is tight and would never move. Well it's been a few hours since we put the blocks together so I enlisted a little bit of help to lift this 245 pound ring and get it into position. I'm using the same PL Premium to secure the ring to the top concrete plate. 
And yes, I am blurring the hole because that is not something you want to see on YouTube. Sometimes we're not ourselves, there's no one I can turn to. And here I'm just placing the barrel on top of the blocks temporarily so I can trace around the barrel and get a reference mark for our seals. At this point I also decided to seal any cracks or open areas of the concrete blocks. My experience with these fire blocks is they tend to crack over time if moisture gets into them. So I'm going to seal it with a roofing tar, it's the best thing I can come up with. And I will seal all the cracks uh, on the lower side and on the horizontal side as well as the vertical cracks of each block. So this is a butyl seal that's made for septic risers. I did purchase this and it reminds me of the same stuff in window seals. So that's what I'm gonna to use to seal the barrel to the concrete blocks. Now this stuff is a pliable material. It is sticky, but not sticky enough to the point where you can't work with it. So I'm using my 190 pound frame to try to set the barrel into the seam and just praying I do not fall in this thing. So here you can see both barrels have been set onto the seals and the weight of the barrels plus the lids should keep these in place. 
Well, now looks like a good time to start some landscaping. I'm digging out a square around this whole pit to lay some mulch in. So first I'm laying down some weed cloth and then I'll put some mulch that I picked up for three for ten dollars and it's a red mulch and to be honest with you I really don't like it. Now somehow I convinced my better half Janine to stain these barrels for me while I run out and try to find a different colored mulch. Okay, so I'm back with a uh, new mulch, which is called Natural Cedar, and I think it goes better with the barrel color, but let me know in the comments uh, which you like better, the red or the natural cedar. I'd be interested to know, and uh, yeah, let me know in the comments below. So for the riser lids, I decided to go with a 24 by 24 inch patio block. These things weigh in at 90 pounds and I was able to find some U-brackets to use as handles and I think this will work fine. I'm just going to set it on the barrel, trace around it and cut it out with a diamond blade on my grinder. So the last thing to do and most importantly is to get a seal in place for the concrete lid. The last thing you want is gases escaping and making your whole yard smell like you know what. The seal was not sticking too well on the oak wood so I used a little bit of adhesive and spread it out first and then applied the seal. Let it dry completely and that way it should stay in place when the concrete lid is on it.
Now this is not the typical way to install risers on your septic tanks and I realize that they should be completely buried but our tanks and our risers are on quite a slope and regardless whatever we use we're going to see part of a riser coming through so by insulating uh, the area with the mulch it should keep everything safe and I think everything will be fine. Well I hope you enjoyed the video if you did make sure you give it a like and don't forget to subscribe We'd love to have you follow along, and I'm Rob with Hammered Halo. We will see you next time.